Hello, I'm Warren Perry, and I'm here in the National Portrait Gallery with Walt Whitman. Our portrait of Walt was painted by John White Alexander in 1889. Today, I want to read a couple of passages out of our recently published Swift to My Wounded, Walt Whitman in the Civil War. This play was written and adapted by me, and it was produced by the National Portrait Gallery's Department of Education in 2006 and 2007. This play was just recently published. This is Walt Whitman summarizing his experiences in the Civil War. Of course, sometimes the worst thing about being Walt Whitman are the memories of Walt Whitman. Make no mistake, war is the worst thing in our world. The memories are all recent, but they will stain and resonate and last in my world, in my mind, until the day I die, if that day is a thousand years from now. The idea of war is simple enough, fighting for a belief, a principle, some land maybe, but war, war is a boy, an American boy with a life in front of him, and he is strong, and he is young, and he is handsome, and he has a girl, a beautiful American girl, and he has plans for some land, and he sees beauty in his life in front of him. He wants to build, and he wants to grow, and his family and his church and his community are proud of him for his successes and sad when he goes away to defend his country. He looks like our fathers and our sons and our brothers and our husbands and all the men we love, and then there it is again, bang. And we've lost our husband, our son, our brother, our father, that is war. War is that box we put him in and the flowers we put on the ground he is under and the grass that grows with him feeding it with that skin we hugged and those bones and muscles that held us, those things of him that belong to the ground now and not to us. That is war, that and worse. Walt Whitman speaks of the hospital in the patent office building. The patent office is the greatest of the Washington buildings, certainly. Yes, I will miss the columns, I will miss the long and classical corridors, and the mighty pediments rising above the walls. I will miss its fortitude, its surety. I must not let the great hospital at the patent office pass away without some mention. After Fredericksburg, the vast area of the second story of this noblest of Washington buildings was crowded close with rows of sick, badly wounded, and dying soldiers. They were placed in three very large apartments. I went there many times. It was a strange, solemn, and with all its features of suffering and death, a sort of fascinating sight. I would go sometimes at night to soothe and relieve particular cases. Two of the immediate apartments were filled with high and ponderous glass cases crowded with models in miniature of every kind of utensil, machine, or invention it ever entered into the mind of man to conceive, and with curiosities and foreign presents. Between these cases were lateral openings, perhaps eight feet wide and quite deep, and in these were placed the sick beside a great long double row of them up and down through the middle of the hall. Many of them were very bad cases, wounds and amputations. Then there was a gallery running above the hall in which there were beds also. It was indeed a curious scene, especially at night when lit up. The glass cases, the beds, the forms lying there, the gallery above and the marble pavement underfoot, the suffering and the fortitude to bear it in various degrees, occasionally from some, the groan that cannot be suppressed. Sometimes a poor fellow dying with emaciated face and glassy eye, the nurse by his side, the doctor also there, but no friend, no relative. Such are the sights, but lately in the patent office. <laughs> 